It was boredom at first sight You could hardly call him bright He is no one's Mr. Right So what do I see in it? Will you be? I prefer coffee. What? What? Uh, have you nearly finished? It's quarter past eight. No, uh, me a uh, shave. Shouldn't you plug it in? <laughs> yes, yes, it's just. Oh, it's a... oh, yeah. Oh. Hey. hey, this is dangerous, you know. You don't press too hard. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean all them plugs on the one socket. If you like, I could make that into a two gang. Yeah, and then I could fix another double over there by running a spur off the rings. Phone! No, no, the, the mains ring. No, I thought I heard the phone! About half past five. What? I'll be home. Oh, <laughs> Brenda, what's up? Can't you sleep? I'm very good at giving half a chance. That was your mother. On the phone? No, on a Formula One broomstick. <laughs> I thought I heard a phone. Well, why didn't you answer it then? Didn't sound like it was for me. <laughs> she said a letter's arrived via recorded delivery. Oh, I'll call around lunchtime. Why didn't you answer it? I didn't hear it. <sighs> oh, it's like living in a doss house with a demented. <laughs> You've opened it. Well, you didn't expect me to sign for something without checking the contents. <laughs> it's a personal letter. That's all right. I haven't shown it to anybody. <laughs> Not likely to either. You're going to reply? Yeah, well, I'll tell them my new address, if nothing else. Oh, well, that should frighten them. <laughs> so that personal letters stay personal. You know, I don't see the details of your business as their business. Whose business? Her solicitors. I mean, you had that workshop before you were married. And it's not as if she ever helped. Helped? Well, cleaned out the office, like I used to do. You know, when I looked in last week, I thought you got a new grey carpet, till I realised it was dust. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm intending to have a big clear-out next week. Business is a bit quiet at the moment. Quiet? I'd have said extinct. <laughs> when did you last have a customer? Well, vintage bikes are a bit of a luxury, aren't they? And what with the recession and everything? Recession? You don't know the meaning of a word. You should have been around when I was a child. Soup kitchens, <laughs> hunger marches, <laughs> even nice people having to kill for things. Yeah, well, it's three weeks, if you must know. What is? Since I last had a customer. All he needed was his tappets adjusting. Yes, well, there could be other reasons. Like what? Uh, Malcolm, your behaviour of late does not actually inspire confidence. I'm sure if I had a motorbike and its tappets were dripping, dripping. I would... Well, whatever tappets do, I would not feel inclined to entrust my precious machine to someone so patently lacking in moral fibre. Look, you were just tappets, so... The... What do you mean, lacking in moral fibre? Well, it must be common knowledge by now that you've deserted your wife and gone to live with a person in... T oh, over there. Firstly, I did not desert her. Separated quite amicably. And secondly, nobody gives a damn where I live as long as I do the job properly. Well, that's just where you're wrong. People are not inclined to entrust delicate work, it, work upon which their lives might ultimately depend, upon someone who might be cracked. <laughs> cracked? Dopey. <laughs> Mother, what are you talking about? Oh, on Malcolm, it's obvious you don't read the papers. <clears throat> it's not the right papers. Inner city. Inner what? <laughs> it's in a city. 
Yeah, lots of people live in a city. <laughs> now, now you're being purposefully obtuse. Nobody is going to entrust work to someone who lives in an area that has plunkers on every corner. <laughs> Mother, I think you mean pushers. <laughs> and you know nothing. Yeah, I do live in an inner city. Along with lots of other ordinary people who don't keep coal in the bath and are neither cracked nor dopey. Well, I know for a fact that's not true. I've met Brenda's mother. <laughs> Two months ago, you were happy. Yeah, I know. In fact, we were worried about your mum thought you were ill. OK. <laughs> David had thought you'd had an accident. Yeah, you told me. Bang on the head or something. Yes, all right. <laughs> so now you're back to normal. No, I'm miserable. Precisely. <laughs> Come on, I came here for a bit of support. All right. You know what this is all about, don't you? How's Malcolm? OK, I suppose. Next time you see him, you'll ask him, eh? Could do. And that's what this is all about, isn't it, Brenda? What do you mean? Well, think about it. Until you split with the ladyship, you two were meeting on the quiet, right? Not when I get. And everything was exciting and dangerous, and it added a bit of spice to your life. And what made you such an expert? I've been there, Bran. Sounds like you're planning a return visit. <laughs> we're talking about you. And now the spice is gone, and worse than that, he's got another woman. What? Well, don't pretend you haven't noticed. I mean, it's all perfectly innocent and all that, but he's enjoying it, you can tell. After all, put two bird brains together and what do you get? Jim Davidson fan club. <laughs> A communication. Well, sort of. All right, Miss Proofs, then what's the answer? You've got to move things along. Men never really know what's good for them, so it's up to us to keep nudging them in the right direction. In fact, as a general rule in all relationships, once a man starts to enjoy himself... It's time to nudge. Exactly. <laughs> you know, Pamela, some people might think you're a cynical old mare, but I know different. Yeah, well, I've studied these things. So really what you're saying, Marge, is that I should get him to pop the question. Right. And when he asks it, do you think Mum will say yeah? Oh, Brenda. <laughs> Well, you do want to, don't you? Well, spend the rest of my life with someone whose idea of a fun evening is to sit in with half a lager and a packet of free-range chicken flavour crisps reading back copies of his DIY magazine. <laughs> yeah? What do you think? Lager. Oh, Tom. Where's mine? It's not good for you. Look what it's done to him. Yeah, I'll stick to me, Jim. What do you think? <laughs> Very pretty. Leave both hands free. For what? And fix things in the dark. Why don't you wait till the morning? Or just switch the light on? Well, might be an electrical fault. Everything's off at the mains. Or, or maybe you're working in a dark corner or under the... The bedclothes. Floorboards. That's enough from you. Go. Shh, I'm concentrating. This is the final. With a teddy bear. You beat Malcolm. Yeah, you switched it to the other three. It was him. Go and play in the kitchen. We've got to have a serious tour. Why do you want to talk about our hereditary diseases? Go. What diseases? We have this age to strangle our younger brothers. Ah, oh, that's all right then. Right, Malk, let's talk. It's OK. I know what you're going to say. You do? Yeah, I've noticed that you're not too happy lately and, uh, well, I've been pondering about it. There's nothing better than a good ponder. Yeah. <laughs> you think that we, that's you and me, should spend more time together? Well, don't force yourself. And you're right. But it's, it's difficult, because we're not, uh, not synchronised. I work days, you work evenings. Yes, I am aware of that, Malk. Yeah, but we've got to make the effort, even if our jobs are out of sync. Please don't say it. But he wants to work in a sink. <laughs> <laughs> You've been storing that one up, haven't you? I thought of it in the work this morning. So that's what your ponderings have come up with, is it? One infantile, lousy joke? No, that was just a sort of throwaway line. Well, you didn't throw it far enough. <laughs> no, I, I mean it, Bren. We've got to arrange more time together. Now, now, you're off again next Thursday, aren't you? Well, we can go bird-watching. Yeah, cos, uh, there's something important I want to ask you. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, we haven't been for... Four months. Long as that? Oh, yeah, we went to Bardsey Island, didn't we? Well, you might have. I went to Seaforth. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, that's right. Bardsey was, um... A year ago. Look, will you stop rehearsing for bore of the month and tell me what these great ponderings finally led to? Well, first I thought, I'll have the afternoon off, and then I thought, no, let's make it a whole day. But just for me? What can I say? <laughs> well... The business has been sort of slackish, and it, uh, it does leave me time to think. And it's too crowded here, and I was wondering if, uh, well, what is putting it into words, isn't it? And, uh, well, I was going to ask you to, um... Malk, leave it till Thursday, eh? OK. I'm glad that's settled. Is he? Yeah. We're definitely going to see more of each other from now on. Is that why you bought the light? What? <laughs> oh, very good, yeah, yeah. I, 
actually, I didn't buy it. The nifty? No, no, it's free. You just had to get a friend to sign up for a year's subscription to Do It Yourself magazine. And who's the friend? Malcolm, have you seen your clients anywhere? <laughs> I put them back in your toolbox. Mother, what's got into you? Yeah, well, it's like Malcolm says, when you lot have left home, I'm going to have to do these things for myself, so I thought I'd have a practice. Malcolm, you know you said you thought the bathroom radiator needed bleeding? Well, I did what you said, but all that came out was water. <laughs> Just about to leave. And this is it, is it? Well, I think a certain question will be asked. And? I'll put him out of his misery. About time. Listen, you are all right about tonight, aren't you? Oh, yeah, no problem. We'll be back. After the day out in the open air, he won't care whose couch he falls asleep on. <laughs> Eight o'clock, please, Brent. Yes, all right. Um, what's up with Ros? Oh, didn't I say? She's away for a few days, her auntie's ill. And we were looking forward to this. We'd already booked. It's OK. There's no problem. In fact, it's quite nice to feel wanted again. I've got to go. I'll see you soon. Eight prompt. Yep. Yeah. Ta-da. Right. <laughs> do you want me to do the shopping? Oh, would you mind? Of course not. We'll go together, eh, kids? Mum's got a busy day ahead. Oh, thanks. I've got a lot of phoning to do. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks. We've been waiting for this. My uncle died and left us his estate. It's called the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Who was it? Pardon? At the door. Nobody. Or, or rather, somebody. Who? Um, he was lost. Wanted directions. Oh, did he? Brenda, give it to me. Let's do some bird watching first. <laughs> the letter, it must be from Lucinda's solicitor, I suppose. I oh, know, Mark. Let's not let it spoil our day. Brenda. I'll let you drive. <sighs> Tonight? Well, yes, I realise it's short notice, but you see, the thing is, if you don't come, there won't be anyone who's actually on Malcolm's side. Anyone truly on Malcolm's side would lock him away till he comes to his senses. Oh, please come, Mrs. Stoneway. I'm sorry, but I've made no secret of the fact that I do not approve of this liaison. To come will be the ultimate hypocrisy. Well, I'm sorry to hear you say that. You see, we had invited the bishops. <laughs> the bishops? Yes. Of Liverpool? Yes, they are from... Uh... And you know them? Yes, we met them in church. You amaze me. <laughs> well, we've invited them and they've promised to pop in during the course of... Both the... of them? Probably. They do tend to do these things together. <laughs> I've noticed. I suppose that's living your side of the water. So are the police. They find it much safer to go around in pairs. <laughs> so you'll come? No, I don't think I want to use public transport. Shall I get David to come and collect you? He has got a new BMW. Has he? <laughs> oh. Well, I suppose, um, for Malcolm's sake. <laughs> well, wait for me. I saw Jill Thompson the other day. Dead chuffed she was. Oh. Her and Ted had been buried in an angle seat and they'd had a rock thrush. Oh. A rock thrush in Clinalau. Right. They also saw two Martians on roller skates looking for a pub that sold on Medic Light a few. What? Malcolm, I've just told you about one of the most fantastic sightings in the history of our bird watching club. And all you can do is act like the Pope at a Madonna concert. Yeah, well, it's all rubbish, isn't it? 
What is? Martians in Anglesey. <laughs> Malcolm, I was telling you about Jill and Ted. They'd had a very rare thrush. Well, you can get a special cream. <laughs> but it's important that you both use it. A rock thrush from Africa. It's the first time one of those has been sighted this far north since 86, which is about the last time you made a sensible comment. I'm sorry, Bren, I just can't concentrate. Oh, we are, take it. It'll spoil our day, though, and now it will. Thanks. Well, go on, then what does it say? We may as well both be miserable. Unless, of course, you know the cream that'll cure that and all. Uh, uh, and as you admit to no longer residing in Mel's, is my client to assume that you are now cohabiting at the above address? Tell him you sleep in the bath. <laughs> we, we, we acknowledge without prejudice details supplied regarding the capital value and profitability of Stoneway Motors over the three-year period prior to the separation. In the light of same and in view of the client's secondary competition event, you require an interim settlement of £10,000. What? To be paid in two equal instalments, the first at the end of this month and the second one month hence. Ten thousand quid! But listen to this. The balance of money is to be paid prior to the date of the decree in ISI. Unless this is delayed by your non-cooperation, in which instance my client will require a further interim payment of similar order. It, it, it's terrible to ask him for half my business. Well, that's all right. You told me you made a loss of 50 quid last month. Get her to put 25 quid in the post. <laughs> and she went to a solicitor in the first place. And we would talk it through and agreed. Everything to go back the way it was. She had the, the car and the flat and I had the workshop and the bike. We'd even split the CDs. Down the middle. No, she got the Beatles collection. I got the best of Barry Manilow. Right, she didn't need a solicitor. <sighs> Brent, what am I going to do? Nothing. It's all a big bluff. Just file all these letters with the bin men and get on with your life. Or should I say, our life? That's easy to say. Not for me, it wasn't. <laughs> what? Nothing. Malk. Yeah? Was there something you wanted to talk about? Yeah, well, with all this business, I'd completely forgotten. So? Well, I was thinking it's not really fair on your mum with us both living at yours. And, I mean, I know she lets me pay on alternate Thursdays when I take her to the supermarket, but I really should do something else. I wondered if you had any idea what might be sort of, well, you know. No, I don't know. Uh, acceptable. Acceptable? Appropriate. And that was the big question, was it? Well, I don't want to take advantage of her. And what about me? Well, you can take advantage of you. She's your mother. I mean, you take it. <laughs> oh, never mind. I must give her something. Look, your flat broke. In debt, even. Anyway, you're in, you keep doing jobs about the house. Yeah, well, perhaps I should do more. And she leads such a busy life. There must be something I could take off her hands. Yeah, perhaps there is. Well, what do you suggest? Me. Yeah, you, what do you suggest? Oh, my. This is a complete waste of time. I'm going home. I suppose I could help her with some ironing. <laughs> Still, I don't suppose she'd like the idea of a man handling a smalls. Well, I could put them to one side, I suppose. I don't fancy handling Gerald's underpants, though. <laughs> Ooh, or his socks. <sighs> Where is everybody? Well, I'm here. I mean, your mum and Gerald. I guess bingo, chess club. I'm not saying who's at which. <laughs> so when are we going to be at Pam's? Eight prompt. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? How we were made redundant once they got Ros. No more come round for a meal. The kids have been asking after you. And oh, if you're not doing anything Friday. <laughs> well, people move on. At least the rest of us do. People's requirements alter. I mean, who'd have thought the top of your mother's Christmas list would be two-speed action hammer drill with personal massage attachments? <laughs> no, but that's what she's getting. Malk? Yeah? You know you said we should see more of each other? Yeah. Didn't you say you wanted a bath? Oh, uh, yeah, OK. Come out then. Right. It's your turn for the plug end. <laughs> Hi. Hiya. Not early, are we? No, just right. And where's Malcolm? He's just gone back to the bike. He's got something he wants to show you. Ah, uh, just a minute, Brent. What's this? Would you stay here? With you? 
Please. But David, you've got a wife, two kids and a newborn nanny to support. <laughs> Just to... Did you have a good day? Not really, no. He got a letter from her solicitor demanding a pound of flesh from his chest. Oh, here he is. Come on. Hey, David, I've got something I want to show you. In a minute, Malcolm. No, it's brilliant. Yeah, look in a minute, Malcolm. It's great. Look at this. It's... Come through. <laughs> <laughs> this is Andy. Is it your birthday? No. Is it mine? No. What's up, hasn't he? No, not yet. Come on. <laughs> Drinks, anybody? <laughs> Take that off. Why? Did it spoil the surprise? No, because you haven't had it yet. <laughs> Look at me. Hiya. Malcolm. Yeah? Will you marry me? What? You That's heard. <laughs> marry you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, OK. Right, come on. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> Who for? Us. Oh, I've got a great timing. <laughs> well, right now, Mrs. Poops. What? The question has been popped. Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> well done, mate. Yeah, well, I've been planning it for a while. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, I think you're very brave and a very good decorator. Thanks, Joyce. <laughs> Before you go, will you do something for me? Anything. The hall, the living room, and the kitchen. <laughs> Oh, good lad, your Malcolm. I'll be sorry to see them go. Will you? No, not really. <laughs> but he is a good lad. You should be very proud. Well, one does one's best to instruct in the niceties of civilised behaviour. <laughs> Since I failed to teach him discrimination. Just, has he been in trouble with the police? <laughs> oh, Mr Lynch. Oh, please, Mrs Stoneway. Call me David. Oh, yes, well, David. And may I call you Marjorie? <laughs> After all, we're soon to be related. Albeit by marriage. It would seem so. <laughs> Though if you're aware of a just impediment, I'm prepared to pay. Now then, Marjorie, go on. Go and congratulate them. Well, I suppose I could wish them every happiness, without specifying how they might achieve it. Yes, that'll do. Now, there's just one thing, David. I... Yes, Marjorie? I don't see that any sign of your namesake. Excuse me? David Shepherd. Who? The bishop. Your wife said he might be here. Are you sure she didn't say the bishops? Oh, yes, because I forget that a town as sinful as this needs two. <laughs> Marjorie, let me introduce you to the bishops. Oh. <laughs> this is Sally and John Bishop. <laughs> Did you say goodbye to everyone? Only then with their eyes open. Yeah, that's my mother there. She gets carried away. She forgets that most people are only human and can't put it away as much as she can. Quite a day. Wasn't it? Do you like being engaged, Bren? Well, it's growing on me. But I'm not planning on making a habit of it, not like you. I promise. What? That this will be the last time. Yeah, well, it better be. For your health's sake. <laughs> Bren? Yeah? Tell me something. What? The party, did you know? No, honest. Well, how did they? It's our Pam. She's got this incredible intuition. And amazingly enough, nine times out of ten, she is completely wrong. But not tonight? <laughs> no. The timing was a bit shaky, wasn't it? Bren, tell me something else. What, one of those stories that gets you all excited? <laughs> no. What if I'd said no? Oh, well, we'd still have had the party, but it would have been just for you. Me? It would have been your wake. <laughs> <laughs> have I fallen in a spell? Does he drown me in Chanel? Is he vibrant? Is he out? So what do I see in it?